This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this chapter, we're going to be talking about exceptions and exception handling. So on the screen, we have the basic block structure of a PLSQL block. We have the exception section highlighted, just as a reminder. So an exception is an expected or unexpected situation that arises during the running of an application. This is different from a compiler error that happens when you compile a program. A compilation error can happen due to syntax or permission errors. Remember that you compile procedures and functions, but you also compile anonymous blocks. They just get compiled as you run them. So an exception is something that happens post-compilation. You run the program, and as it's running, it gets an error. The error might be expected. For example, you might be selecting data from a table, and the query returns no rows. In PLSQL, this is raised in an exception called no data found. In this case, the no data found, it may be perfectly acceptable to not return any rows. Or it may be a tragic error with nasty consequences that you have to do something. How you handle the error depends on how you and your program view the error. PLSQL is just telling you this happened, and it's up to you to decide is this a critical problem? Is this okay? And how you handle it is what this chapter is about the exception handling. PLSQL provides very robust error handling via these exceptions. We call it exception handling. It's implemented via the optional exception section, as you can see on the screen. If you remember the declaration section, the executable section, and the exception section, and then you end it with the end. So the declaration and exception sections are both optional. You don't have to declare variables. You don't have to handle exceptions. But in general, it's a good practice to handle exceptions. So here's a piece of code. I declare a variable. I have a null executable. And then I have a when others than null. This is the exception handling block. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to throw away the error. That means nothing will ever show up to anyone. Any exception that happens gets thrown away. You never know about it. That's generally a bad practice. Now, in this particular case, if I run it, see, it didn't handle the exception. It didn't throw it away. This exception handler is going to handle exceptions that occur in the executable section. This exception that I got, the value error, I'm trying to put letters into a number. This would actually be raised out to the next level. So if I had an anonymous block calling a function that had this in it, it would raise it back to the anonymous block. So this exception handler is going to handle errors from this executable block. So if I change this a little bit, clear this out. Now I still have exception happening, but now it's happening. I'm trying to assign letters to a number in the executable block. It handled it. And the reason I say this is throwing away and why it's a bad practice, if you have when others than null in your code, you're never going to know you got an exception. That's not a good thing. You need to know what's happening in your code. If you can't tell where an error occurred, it's nearly impossible, or at least very difficult, to debug. There are a few very rare instances where when others than null is valid. I'm using it because it's the simplest way to make my example. In the few cases where it seems like this is the right answer for your situation, you might want to get the advice of someone with more experience. I'm willing to bet you'll be wrong. This isn't going to be the answer. OK, so moving on. When an exception is raised, it goes to the nearest exception section. So as I said before, if you have a function that gets an exception and you handle it there, the calling program won't even know you had that exception. If you don't handle it, it goes up to the next level and says, do I have an exception handler here? If it doesn't, it goes on to the next level, to the next level, until it finally gets to the calling program and raises an exception that a user will see. So let me go ahead and modify this a little bit more and turn this into a procedure. So procedure compiled. And just to talk again about the compiler exceptions versus runtime exceptions, notice that even though we know that you could never put strings in a number, it compiled fine. It's going to find this at runtime. Let me go ahead and call this. And even though we have when others than null, my anonymous block raised the error because the exception is happening in the declaration section. So I'll change this around to how we had it before and put it in the executable section. Compile that. We'll run it again. 
and notice it completed successfully. That's because the exception was handled inside the procedure. And it wasn't really handled, it was just kind of hidden. Again, bad practice. And just to show you what happens if you don't handle it, it looks a lot like it did when the exception was in the declaration section. And remember I said it raises it to the next level, so this exception was raised from the procedure to my anonymous block. I can actually try to handle it here in this anonymous block. And I did. Basically what I said is, if this call, anything in the executable section gets an exception, come into this, I knew it was a value error that I was going to raise, so I said win value error. Now this is the better way to do it. I'm moving past the win others, and I'm actually starting to get into handling specific errors, and this is generally the better way to go. This value error is called a named exception, and I'll cover the named exception in detail in a few minutes, but for now the point is that the exception raises up through the calls until it hits the exception handler that deals with that specific error. If no exception handler is found at all, the exception is raised back to the client. So if I had said in here, say, when no data found, matter of fact, I'll go ahead and type that. That's another named exception. I'll go ahead and do it. You see, I'm still getting the value error because this would only handle a no data found exception. So if you don't handle the exception in the win others or within the specific one, you have to keep checking and handling as you go up. So this is the end of part one. I'm going to come back in a few minutes and finish this discussion up.